Welcome back. Today we do a quick and casual one on the SMSL D400 DAC. So a super nice DAC. I do want to thank Apos Audio for letting me borrow this for a couple weeks. It is a super, super nice DAC and I uh, feel uh, lucky to have been able to hear it for a couple weeks and enjoy it for a couple weeks. But we'll kind of go through it and I kind of start off what's different about the D400 and why I wanted to hear it. This one does have the AK combo, the 4191 and the 449EX DAC. So I think that is the Velvet Sound DAC. It does also have five uh, op amp 1612s does have XMOS USB to max out your DSD at 512 and your PCM at uh, 768. So if you are an old SMSL, not old, but uh, previous SMSL design style boxes, you know that they they started to revamp the front of their front of their boxes. So less of the square rectangular flat boxes. Uh, some of them have the inset on the screen. Some of them are doing the wave pattern. This one has kind of a wave pattern plus the upgraded screen and the upgraded interface. So this is very, very nice compared to the ones that I have, which are the older SMSL design and they look quite dated compared to this. But this is a very nice clear screen, nice new graphics. The design is kind of nice. It's, it's actually a little bit of a bigger box if you're used to some of their older boxes. This one is just a little bit wider, but very, very nice design. And you can kind of see why they, this model is slightly upgraded. It just looks a little bit nicer on your desk. So the interface, as I said, the interface design elements are all new. If we had a bit rate, it would be right there. But the menus are actually uh, quite nice as well. This is very different compared to the older SMSL design, which is very basic. This is actually kind of a graphic menu, which is quite nice. Inputs, outputs, uh, PCM filter, DSD filters, ND color, pre-modes, uh, the multi-tune, I2S mode, left and right channels, phase, dimmer, brightness, and then resetting all of those. So actually quite nice, you know, compared to the older menu styles, this is definitely more of a modern version of a device that you would, you know, a modern version of an interface that you would expect at a device costing $620. So SMSL is working their way towards modernizing everything and, and increasing design. And it's, it's kind of exactly where the D400 was. So on the back, and I won't flip around the back, but it does have all the ins and outs that you would expect at this price point. It does do USB coax optical. It does also do I2S AES Bluetooth. And on the on the out on the outside, it does have um, RCAs and XLR XLRs. So sound, as I said, yes, this one is very very nice. It does sound glorious. There's certainly some AK sound in play. And perhaps it's more musical than ESS, but it's still very dynamic, very resolving, kind of exactly what I was expecting. There is a little bit of a more vividness to it, more transparency, sharper imaging. You know, and I actually plugged this behind my SMSL SH9, and I sort of swapped out DACs, right? I have a SMSL DAC, a previous with the, S the SU9 Pro, slide in the D400 and kind of like, why is this sound different? Why does it sound better? If I bought it, I would like instantly keep it because it actually sounds very, very good. But you know, when it kind of comes down to why, why does it sound better to me? That was a little bit harder to figure out what was really going on. And to be honest, I plugged it in and I loved it. And the D400, it, it's kind of complex in what it's really doing. And it was really hard to put a finger on what exactly I liked about the sound. And part of it is, you know, perhaps it just sounds different than my ESS DAX, right? I currently have SMSL, ESS toppings and SMSL. And perhaps that's just attractive to me that I'm hearing something different. And in that way, I'm kind of in the honeymoon effect of... Something different sounds better than what I have. The grass is always greener on the other side of the thing that I don't have. Perhaps that is a lot of it. You know, perhaps it is. There is some ESS AK difference to it, and that sounds more attractive to me. And the D400 does expose all the AK PCM filters, and I do think those have a pretty big influence on AK's refined sound, just as they do with ESS. And again, if you're used to hearing ESS filters, to hear them executed on AK, that's going to be a little bit different as well. So perhaps there is some of that. And then to add confusion as to how this is actually coloring the sound in that way, 
The D400 has something called those ND sound color modes, which are very nondescriptive choices that do something different than SMSL sound colors, which if you're, if you're a previous SMSL uh, user, you know, they, they've always had sound colors. These, where was the ND? Um, somewhere over here, right? So ND color is this weird icon. And they call it that, right? You got sound, sound one, sound two, sound three, and sound four. And if you look in the menu, if you look in the manual, it essentially has the same sound one through four. So those are doing something in combination with your PCM filters. If you're using PCM, if you're using DSD, those have a set of different filters. So all these things are sort of working together to refine the sound in a way that is probably different than my other DACs, and, and perhaps that is just attractive as well. But to sum up, I think. It's really hard to put a finger on why it sounds better. I certainly enjoy it, and I will enjoy it until I have to actually send it back. But yeah, it's um, actually a very, very nice stack, and I love listening to it. And it's one of those few things that sometimes you get a dongle, sometimes you get a DAC, sometimes you get an app, and you listen to it, and you're like, yeah, it's okay. It doesn't quite sound as good as the one I already have, or there's something about it I don't like. This one, I plugged it in and never unplugged it, never turned away from it. I used it essentially every day since I've had it. It's... It's quite good, and uh, yeah, no doubt. It's uh, if I had actually purchased it, I would most definitely have kept it. And and to sum up, I would say exactly that. Right? Hard to put a finger on why it sounds better, but if I had made a purchase, there would be no regrets. I would have just put it back on my desk, plug it in, and it would not leave my desk ever. So, like I said, there, there's lots of different filters that are going on here, and you can kind of see how they they break out. Their PCM filters look like this. So. They do sharp roll-off, slow roll-off, short sharp, short slow, super slow, low dispersion. And on top of that, you've got those sound color modes that I talked about. And then you do have DSD filters, which are wide and narrow. If you are a, a DSD purist person, they do have a pre-mode. So you can you actually do get a pre-mode on this one. You can do, you do get some kind of volume adjustment on pre-mode, or you can do fixed. But inside the pre-mode, they do have the... The, um, they call it fixed DSD bypass. So if you want to run pure DSD, unfiltered, unprocessed, that is what they have that mode. And I'm not sure that was one of those things that was hard to figure out which SMSL devices and DACs actually had a bypass, a DSD bypass. I'm, I'm sort of into DSDs. I have them. I'm not really into finding the devices that have the perfect bypass to hear it unprocessed in its pure form, but this was one that actually had the bypass, and I thought that was actually kind of an interesting feature for those of you who are super into DSDs, and that makes up the majority of your library, you'll kind of care about that. So so is it worth $620, right? That's the, the gist of it. And I think the people who are spending... $620 on a DAC, you're looking for something very specific. And perhaps on this one, it would be the AK449EX, right? For example, there's not a ton of devices that use that specific AK chip. This happens to be one of them. That puts you in this price range. There's SMSL actually does have an SU9 Ultra, which is essentially the same configuration of AK chips. You just get less features and a lower price. So when you go back to when I talk about features, when so SMSL does this quite often. If you look at the inputs, the, the lower models tend to have USB, coax, and optical. They drop off I2S and AES, and I think BT is usually included. But if you want I2S and AES, those tend to be a couple of hundred dollars, one or two hundred dollars more expensive than the lower model. And that's sort of exactly what you get on the SU9 Ultra. And then the same thing, Topping has an E7, E70V. Again, less features, but it is cheaper than this one. If you want all the inputs, this specific DAC, if you like the look of this design, the upgraded screen, you know, all the things that SMSL has been working on over the past couple of years, yeah, then you're basically at $620 and it's going to be worth $620 to you. So that is what I got on the D400. So thank you guys again for tuning in and I will see you next time.